Hi, it's John Voot and this lesson is on Film Noir from Trinity College London Drum Kit Grade 4. So looking at the sheet music in the book, you've got the song title at the top of the page and then beneath that to the left hand side it says a quarter note equals 115. So that's the tempo of the piece. So this piece is played at 115 quarter note beats per minute. Okay, so it's a sort of medium tempo. And then beneath that, you've got the style or genre of the piece, so it says jazz rock. Okay, so you've got a fusion of those two styles here. So you've got the subtlety and kind of texture and tastefulness of jazz, and you've got the rock side as well. Okay, so it's kind of got the rhythm and like the edginess of rock as well. Okay, but make sure you're not kind of overpowering the music and playing full on rock. You want to make sure you're fusing those two styles, so jazz and rock coming together there. So just make sure uh, you understand that before you start playing. Okay, you don't just want to rock out to this track, or you don't want to keep it light and jazzy. You want to kind of uh, balance of the two genres. Okay, so believe that in the first bar of music at the start of the bar there, you can see the time signature. So this piece is played in four four. So four at the top tells us there's four beats in the bar. One, two three, four, and the four at the bottom tells us the note value of the beat is a quarter note. So those beats we're feeling are quarter notes. So we've got four quarter note beats in the bar. And you can see in that first bar there written out, we haven't got four beats in that bar, okay? We've just got four eighth notes, so that's two beats long. So that is an anacrusis or pickup bar, okay? Which is gonna lead into the start of the piece. Okay, so because that's two beats long, it's gonna come in in the final two beats of the bar, and we know we've got four beats in the bar, so the final two beats are the three and the four. So that first bar is gonna come in on the three, so we've got three and four and. We've got a flam on the down beats, so it's always good to alternate your flams, okay, to make sure you're not kind of using just one side all the time and making that side stronger than the other side. You wanna practice both sides, so if you can, alternate those flams. So start with a right flam on the three, kick on the and, left lamb on the four, kick on the and. So you've got three and four and. Okay, so for this piece, you've got a two bar counting. So you'll hear one, two, one, two, and then on that three of the second bar of the counting is where you play that pickup or anacrusis, okay? So you'll hear one, two, one, two, Okay, so that's where it comes in, and like I said, that picks you up into the very first full bar, which is the official bar one of the piece, where we've got that crash symbol there, and the groove kicks in, okay? So we've got an eighth note groove in the first full bar of the piece, so you crash in on the one, accentuating the start of the groove, and then we're on to those eighth notes on the hi-hat, and here we've got a bass and snare drum rhythm, so quarter on the bass on one, Backbeat on the two there for a dotted eighth, and then we've got a sixteenth note snare drum on the out of two, and it's a smaller note head, which means it's a ghost note, so we want to play that note quieter, okay? So the backbeat on two stands out nice and loud, and the snare note on the out of two quiet, okay? So you want to feel it, not hear it. So out of two there on the ghost note, another bass drum on the three for a sixteenth, another ghost note on the snare on the E of three, bass drum for an eighth note on the end of three. And then we've got an eighth note rest on the four, and the set, and the uh, next note there is the and of four, eighth note on the snare drum. And again, that's gonna be a backbeat note, so it's played louder. Okay, so you've got your kind of delayed backbeat there. So the backbeat is on the two, and the and of four. Okay, so putting that bar together, bar one, we've got one, two, three, four, Okay, and the other thing to mention about the bar is you've got an accent there above the, the one, so you wanna make sure you, you, you hit that crash with more emphasis, okay, a bit more force. And then in the next bar, so this is a, a two bar groove, we carry on playing those eighth notes, bass and snare drum rhythm now, we've got a eighth note rest on the bass drum on the one, we play the end of one for an eighth note, eighth note rest on the two, and then we've got an eighth note on the snare drum on the end of two there, okay, so again, it's like a, it's like a delayed backbeat we're used to hearing that backbeat on the two and four, and this one here is on the end of two, so it's an eighth note later than, uh, than you'd, you'd expect. And we've got eighth note rest on the bass drum on the three, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of three, snare drum on the four for an eighth, bass drum on the end of four. Okay, so if we play that first, so just close hi-hats all the way through, and the bass is uh, snare drum rhythm as well. We've got three, four, Okay, so again, you've got that contrast 
of backbeat uh, placement, okay? One's off beat, one's on the beat. Okay, then above the bar, above those hi-hat notes, you can see we've got some open and closes. Okay, so we're opening on the upbeat of one, closing on the downbeat of two, open on the upbeat of two, closing on the downbeat of three, open on the upbeat of three, close on the downbeat of four. Okay, so just get that hi-hat rhythm down first. We've got three, four. Okay, so we wanna play that while playing that bass and snare drum rhythm. Okay, so you're gonna open up on the, uh, the upbeats, which are where the first uh, two um, bass and snare drums are playing. So that first half of the bar sounds like this. We've got three, four. Okay, then in the second half of the bar, opening on that bass drum, closing on the snare drum. Okay, so we'll try that whole bar now. We've got three, four. Okay, so you want to get that down. It feels, it feels uh, well, if you're not used to playing that kind of thing, which you should be if you've gone through, uh, uh, through my course to kind of uh, talk you through all these techniques. Okay, because obviously you're going against the pulse there on the opens. Okay, the bass drum and snare drum are in kind of um, unexpected places as well. So it's quite difficult to kind of get, um, to put all that together. So spend some time on that bar if you need to. Get it nice and tidy, make sure you're feeling the groove and you're not just playing the notes, okay? You're playing like a rigid robot. You wanna make sure you get it down physically and then you wanna put some feel into it, okay? So we're gonna put the two bar groove together now. So bars one and two, the whole groove, we've got three, four. Okay, then into the next bar, bar three. We uh, back on the hi-hat there, so still on the hi-hat. And then you carry on playing those eighth notes, bass drum on the one for quarter note. Open eye out on the end of one, closing on the back beat of two. We've got snare drum there. Out of two again, uh, ghost note snare. And we've got two kicks as eighth notes on the three. Rest on the four for an eighth. Snare drum on the end of four. Okay, so that bar we've got three, four. Okay, you see we've got an accent above that note there, that final note on the hi-hat and snare drum. So you want to hit that with more emphasis, more four, so it really stands out. And then in bar four, which is the final bar of line one, we've got half a bar of groove, so we carry on playing those eighth notes on the hi-hat. So we've got one and two and bass and snare drum rhythm. We've got an eighth note rests on the one, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of one, snare drum on the two for a quarter note, okay? And we've got an open hi-hat again on the end of one, okay, closing on the two. So that first half of the bar, we've got three, four, Okay, so again, you're opening the hi-hat at the same time that bass drum's played, okay, on that and of one. So left foot's lifting up, right foot's going down, okay, so you've got that contrast of feet, to just make sure you're comfortable with that. And then in the second half of the bar, so beats three and four, you've got a fill. Okay, now this fill is a classic Motown fill, okay, so Motown is a record label that uh, produced a lot of great soul tracks in the 60s and continued on in the following decades as well, releasing some, some great kind of uh, feeling R&B tracks, okay? So they're a really well-known record label. Um, and this is one of the fills that was used a lot in the Motown records, okay? So the rhythm here, we've got two 16th notes and then three 16th note triplets, okay? So the two 16th notes take up the first half of the beat. So that'd be three E, and the three 16th note triplets take up the other half of the beat, okay? so. Two sixteenth notes, you've got one on the medium time, one on the snare, so you want to play that right left. You can see the sticking above above the notes there. So right left for the sixteenths, and then we come down onto the snare drum to play right, right left for the sixteenth triplets. Okay, so we got on the three, one, two. Okay, then we got two eighth notes on the fourth beat, one on the snare drum, one on the high tom, so four and. So three E and four and. So we've got three, four. Okay, and you can see the dynamics there. We've got an accent above the first note, which is the medium tom, and we've got an accent on the last two notes, the snare and tom. So those one, those those dynamics are really important. Gives it the authenticity of the feel there. Okay, so you want to make sure you're really comfortable with that. So we want to keep the non-accent obviously the lower in dynamic than the accented notes, really key. So we got one, two. So nice and slow, we've got one, two. 
Getting a bit faster. One, two. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the two bars together, bars three and four. So this is phrase in two bars. So we've got three, four. Okay, so get that down, those two bars there, and then we're gonna put the whole line together. Okay, so that's like the intro line of the piece. So you've got your anacrusis that picks you up into the groove in bar one. We crash in with an accent. Make sure you're feeling those two bars. You're not just playing notes, yes. Yeah? So really get that, that two bar groove down. Give it some feel. And then in the last two bars uh, of, the, of the line there, obviously you're playing one and a half bars of groove and then you've got that Motown style feel at the end of the, uh, of the line there. So make sure everything's flowing. So try a nice, a comfortable tempo, okay, so you want to kind of drop it down maybe to somewhere around 70, 80 beats per minute and then bump it up to song tempo, 115, as you get comfortable with the music. Make sure you're feeling the notes, you're playing music, you're not just playing notes, okay? You don't want to be sight reading and just putting in the notes. You want to be reading the music, make sure you know where all the notes go, make sure you can physically play the parts and then as you start to get comfortable, less energy goes into playing the notes more energy goes into how you're playing the notes, okay? So it's not what you're playing, it's how you're playing it. Okay, so make sure you're thinking about that as you play this line. So we'll put that line together now at the song tempo. And now we'll try the top line in time with the backing track. Okay, now this song was composed in the style of Billy Taylor's tune, I Wish I Knew How It Would Feel To Be Free, which is most famously sung by Nina Simone. Okay, so if you know that song, you'll have an idea of the style of this song. Okay, but if you don't, give that song a listen to, just, just uh, uh, to give yourself a feel for how this kind of style of music's played, okay? Just sort of give you a good reference. So we're gonna play it in time with the music now. Remember there's a two bar counting, we come in on the three of the second bar of the counting to play that anacrusis, okay, which is two beats long, and then we're in with the groove. Keep it really solid, keep everything neat and tidy. Make sure those open hi-hats are nice and crisp, opening at the right points, closing at the right points. The fill flows at the end of the line, okay, that nice Motown fill with a nice authentic sound to it, making sure those dynamics are in there. And also, beneath the pickup bar, we've got an F there, short for forte, so we wanna play this line loud. Okay, so a lot of energy, as soon as you come in, nice strong flams, but remember, not full on rock, okay, so you don't wanna rock out, this is jazz rock, okay, so we need that subtle, kind of tasteful, jazz rock fusion sound, okay, so let's try it top line now, in time with a backing track. So now we come into section A of the piece, starting at bar five. So you can see the rehearsal mark in there with the letter A in a box. Also, just above and beside the letter A, you can see we've got the sign there. So we know we're gonna be coming back to this point later in the song. So we just need to take a mental note of that. And at the start of bar five as well, you can see we've got a start repeat sign. So we're gonna be coming back to this start repeat sign as well. Okay, so in this bar, we're playing the same thing that we played in the first bar. Okay, the very first full bar of the piece. Okay, but the only difference is you can see beneath the bar it says MF, short for mezzo forte. So we've dropped the dynamic for this section to half loud. Okay, so first bar there we've gone through. So looking at the next bar, bar six, eighth notes carry on. We've got that open eye out on the end of one again, closing on the two. And the bass of snare rhythm, we've got a bass on the end of one, snare jump on the two for a back beat out of two as a ghost note, two eighth notes on the bass drum on the three, eighth note on the snare drum on four, eighth note on the bass drum on the four. So that, um, put those two bars together, we've got three, four. Okay, so you've got the accent again on the first note of the, um, of that groove, okay, the first, uh, the first note of bar five. And then in the next bar, bar seven, we carry on playing those eighth notes on the hi-hat. We've got the open on the end of one again, close on the two. And then we've got another bass of snare drum rhythm. So this one, we've got a bass on one, snare on two, ghost note on the A of two again. And then we've got three for a 60th note on the bass drum. E as a ghost note on the snare drum. 
and a on the bass drum there, back beat on four on the snare drum for an eighth note, bass drum on the end of four. Okay, so if we go through that bar separately, bar seven, we've got three, four. Okay, and then we come into the next line where you can see a ending there, first ending, the, the first time bar of the repeated section. Okay, so in this bar, eighth note rest um, on the uh, bass and snare drum part, on the one, and of one on the bass drum, snare drum for course out on two. So the same as that, um, that bar that you played at the end of line one, okay, which is bar four of the piece. So we've gone through that, so we're gonna put together uh, the start of this section, start of A with the first time bar. So we got three, four, Okay, and then we hit that end repeat at the end of the first time bar there, which takes us back to the start repeat sign, at the start of bar five. So we go through bars five, six, and seven again, and then we go to the second time bar, okay, which is bar nine. So we've got the same first half of the bar there as we did in the previous ending in the first time bar, and the fill changes this time to the fill that we played in the pickup bar, the anacrusis, that flam kick, flam kick for three and four and. So that second time bar sounds like this. We've got three, Four. Okay, so if you try the start, uh, the start of the section, so bar five, and we'll play through with the second time bar. We've got three, four. We hit that end repeat sign again at the end of the second time bar, which takes us back to the start repeat at, uh, sign at the start of bar five. Play through bars five, six, and seven again, and then we go to the third time bar, which is in bar 10. Okay, now in bar 10, we're playing the exact same thing we played in the first time bar. Okay, so we've gone through that. So that's the three uh, endings there, endings one, two, and three. You can see they're numbered. And then ending three is an open repeat. So after we play ending three, we continue on to the next line. Okay, so we got another two bar groove here at the start of this, uh, this line, starting at bar 11. So looking at bars 11 and 12, we've got crash in again with an accent above it into the groove. And we got that same groove that we played in the first bar of the piece and also the first bar of section A. And in the second bar there of, of that line, bar 12, we play exactly what we played in the second bar of the piece. So we've got that same two bar groove we played in line one. And then you've got the same third bar as well, always changing as the fill in the last bar of that line. Okay, so we've got an eighth note rest on one for both the hi-hat part and the bass and snare drum part. Okay, so nothing at all played on the one there. Then we've got an and of one on the hi-hat, and we've got two and the end of two on the hi-hat as well. Okay, so we've got that open on the end of one again, close on the two, then we play the end of two as well. Okay, so if we play just that first half of the bar, bass drum on the open hi-hat as well, snare drum on the two, and we've got an out of two, and it's not a ghost note this time. It's a normal snare stroke. So we got three, four. Okay, then we've got a fill for beats three and four. We've got three E and four E and. So we're gonna play that right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left on snare for the three E, right on high tom for the and, right left for the four E on the snare, right on the medium tom for the end of four. So three E and, four E and, and we've got accents above the and. So you wanna hit those tom notes with more emphasis, more force, okay, a bit more stress on the notes. So that bar, we've got three, four. Okay, and then we've got a double bar line there at the end of, of, of that line, okay, so we've got a musical change coming. So the end of that bar there, bar uh, 14, brings us to the end of section A, okay, so we're going to put that whole section together now. Okay, so keep the groove solid, the two bar groove, make sure all the open hi hats are really neat and tidy, okay, and you're comfortable with the fills, they've got a nice flowing rhythm to them, okay, complementing the feel of the track. Okay, so let's give section A now a try at the song tempo. So remember initially, bring it down to a nice comfortable slow tempo, get used to where the notes go, be physically able to play it, and then you wanna add some feel into it as you build the tempo up, okay, to the song tempo, 115 beats per minute. So let's try a song tempo now and see how it sounds.
And now we'll try section A in time with the backing track. So now we come on to section B, which starts at bar 15. Okay, so you can see the rehearsal mark in there, the letter B in a box. Okay, now this section is very different to the previous parts we played. So this is a kind of more mellow, syncopated section. Okay, so looking at the first bar of this section, bar 15, we've got that accented crash for a quarter on the one again. So make sure you hear that with um, more force, more emphasis on that note. Accentuate the start of the section. And then we've got a ride bell part playing the upbeat. Okay, so we're gonna play two and four on the ride bell. Okay, so there's a lot of space between the right hand notes. Okay, so obviously we've just been playing in the previous sections those eighth notes on the hi-hat. So now there's much more space, just hitting the two and the four on the ride bell. Okay, so looking at the bass and snare drum and beneath that, we've got eighth note on the bass drum on the one, eighth note on the snare drum on the end of one, eighth note rest on the two, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of two, eighth note rest on the three, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of three, so playing those two upbeats. And then we got snare drum on the four for an eighth note, bass drum on the and a four. Okay, so you're hitting a lot of ands in this bar to kind of give it that syncopated feel. So that first bar of this section, bar 15, sounds like this. We got three, four. Okay, then in the next bar, we've got the same thing with the right hand, but we haven't got the crash on the one. Okay, so we're just hitting that right bell on the two and the four, and then beneath that, you've got an eighth note rest on the one, eighth note on the bass drum on the end of one, snare drum, dotted eighth note on the two, ghost note on the out of two, then we've got bass drum on the three for a sixteenth, snare drum again, ghost note, snare drum on the E of three, bass drum for an eighth note on the end of three, and then we've got four for an eighth note on the snare drum, and then we've got two sixteenth notes on the and and the out of four, we're gonna play right, left. Okay, so we just try the bass and snare first of all before we put the right hand in as well. We got one, two, three, four. Okay, so you wanna make sure you're comfortable with that. So that's quite a tough rhythm to play when you haven't got that anchor of like the consistent eighth notes. Okay, so when there's much more space, especially when you have no right hand at all, like we just, we just done, it's, it's, it's quite tricky to play that rhythm. So you really wanna make sure you get that down, because when we add in the right hand, obviously there's not many notes, so it's not gonna to feel too different from playing it with no notes, okay? It's just gonna add in another part, which is obviously gonna make it a little bit trickier, first of all, okay? So take the right hand out, get that rhythm down. Once you got it, we'll put in the right hand as well. So we got three and four and. Okay, so as this is phrasing two bars, we're gonna try the two bars now, bars 15 and 16. We got three and four and. Okay, and then in the next bar, we've got the same thing that we played in the first bar of the section in bar 15, just haven't got that crash on the one. Okay, so we try that without the crash. So bar uh, 17, we've got three and four and. Okay, so you see that there's loads of space in this section. And then in the next bar, we've got something different. Okay, so we've got a quarter note rest on the one again. Ride bell on the two for a quarter note. And then we've got eighth note rest on the uh, downbeat of three. And we crash, an accented crash on the end of three. And we've got a sixteenth note rest on the four. And we crash, accented crash again, dotted eighth note on the E of four. So we've got and E on the crash symbol. Okay, so we're gonna put this together with, with the bass and snare drum rhythm as well. Okay, so we've got eighth note rest, two sixteenth notes on the bass drum, on the and and the out of one. Quarter note on the two on the snare drum, so you've got an at two, and then we've got flam on three, so you can play a right or left flam there, whichever you prefer. So we've got three, bass drum, 
the same time as the crash in unison. So you've got three and. Then left hand plays the snare drum on the four for a 16th note. Then we've got a dotted eighth note played in unison with the crash on the E. So four E. Okay, so you've got rest and a two, three and four E. So three and four and. Okay, so we're gonna put the two bars together now, the previous bar, so bar 17 and bar 18. Okay, so those two bars, we've got three and four and. Okay, so trying the whole line, we've got three and four and. Okay, and then on to the next line. Very similar thing in bars 19 and 20, the first two bars of that line. Okay, so we've just got that same bar that we played in bar 15, in bar 19 there, so that's the same thing we've, we've already gone through. And in the next bar, like I said, similar thing to which we played in bar 16, but you can see that the ending's different. So instead of those uh, two 16th notes on the snare drum, we've just got one 16th note on the A uh, or four on the bass drum. Okay, so that last beat is four on the snare for a uh, dotted eighth note, and then we've got the ah of four on the bass drum. Okay, so that bar, just uh, that bar on its own, bar 20, we've got three and four and. Okay, so putting those two bars together, bars 19 and 20, we've got three and four and. Okay, and that out of four brings us nicely into the fill in the next bar, in bar 21. So we've got that flam kick, flam kick again in eighth notes. And then we've got an, another flam on the downbeat of three. Three sixteenth triplets on the end of three going round the kit. So we've got snare, high tom, floor tom. So three and. So we've got one, two. Kick on the four, and then we've got another flam on the and of four. Okay, there's two eighth notes at the end. So that rhythm of that bar, one and two and three, da da da, four and. Okay, so we've got those three skin triplets on the and of three. So that bar, we've got three and four and. Okay, so again, those flams up to you, whether you play them right or left-handed. So I played, I think, right flam on the three and then a left flam on the and of four. Okay, so again, good to use both right and left. You don't just want to play one-sided continuously. So when I say it's up to you, it's up to you whether you play a left or right in certain places, okay? It's not up to you to go, okay, I'm going to score a left flam every single time. Okay, all, all I mean is you don't have to play a right there or a left there, but make sure you're using right and left flams in this piece. Okay, but in the last bar of that line, so uh, bar 22, we've got quartet rest on one, bass drum for an eighth note on the two, open hi-hat on uh, the end of two, bass drum on the three, then we've got and of three, or open hi-hat, bass drum on the four, open hi-hat on the and of four. And above the bass drum notes, you can see that plus sign, so we close the hi-hat at the same time we play that bass drum, okay? So your feet are going down together this time. Okay, so rest on one, two, and three, and four, and we've got one, two, three, four, Okay, to complete that line. So we're gonna put that line together now. So uh, bars 19, 20, 21 and 22, we've got three and four and. Okay, so get that line down. And you can see beneath that final bar, we've got a crescendo. So you just gotta build the energy, gradually get louder as you play those open hi-hat parts. Okay, so with the dynamic in that last bar, you got three and four and.
Okay, so you want to get that line down, make sure you're flowing through that nicely, got a nice mellow sound to it. And then beneath the final bar of that line, so beneath bar 22, you can see we've got a crescendo. Okay, so you want to gradually get louder as you play those open hi-hats. All right, you want to build the energy. So we're at mezzo forte. You can see the start of the next section, we go back to forte. Okay, so you just want to crescendo through from mezzo forte to forte. So that uh, final bar there of, of that section, bar 22, with the, with the crescendo, we've got three, four, Okay, so make sure you got that in as well. And then we're gonna put the whole section together, so the whole of section B, okay? So this upbeat ride bell section, keep it nice and mellow and just make sure everything's flowing. That bass and snare rhythm is flowing because it hasn't got that anchor of the eighth notes now, okay? So it's really important to have that good internal time to make sure every note's played in the right place, okay? You've got that uh, keeping good rhythm there. 60 note triplets, obviously, in this, so make sure you're flowing around the kit in the right rhythm and ending with that crescendo with the open hi-hats. Okay, so let's try section B now, song tempo. But remember, initially you want to try a nice, comfortable, slower tempo. And then as you get the feel of it and you add some feel to how you're playing it, then you can start bumping it up to that song tempo 115. So let's just hear how it sounds at the uh, goal tempo 115. And now we'll try section B in time with a backing track. Okay, so lock in with the track, keep that mellow sound, and make sure all those no notes are sitting nicely, okay, in the right place. Okay, have good internal time, make sure that upbeat on a two and four, ride bell, sitting right on that two and four, okay, right in the right place. Okay, so section B in time with a backing track. Now we come on to section C, which starts at bar 23. So you can see the rehearsal marking there, the letter C in a box. So we've got two bars, first two bars of this section, bars 23 and 24. We've got an eighth note fill flowing around the kit, okay? So first eighth note's on the snare drum, then we're up to the high tom, medium tom, then floor tom, so the four drums, okay? So you can play right, left, right, left, or you can play a right paradiddle, right, left, right, right. So one and two and. Then we've got three and, both on the bass drum, flam on the high tom on the four, kick on the and of four, another kick on the one of the next bar, then we've got a flam on the medium tom, another two kicks, flam on the floor tom, another two kicks, crash and snare on the and of four, and we've got an accent on that note, okay? So when you crash the snare at the end of those two bars, more emphasis on that note, okay? So the pattern after going around the kit is kick, kick, flam, kick, kick, flam, kick, kick, flam, kick, kick, crash. Okay, so if we try that now, and believe the bar, F, short for forte, so we're gonna play this nice and loud. We got three, four. Okay, so again, you wanna make sure you alternate your flams. And then in the next bar, which is bar 25, First note in the bar there, that half note is tied to the eighth note we just played at the end of that, uh, those two bars, so that crash. So we don't play that half note because it's tied, the, the note merges to the eighth note, okay? So you let it ring, that crash ring for the first two beats of that bar. Then we play the hi-hat on beats three and four. Okay, so two quarter notes there. Then we play the hi-hat for the next two beats um, in the next bar, so the first two beats of the next bar, which is bar 26, okay? So you got one, Two, and you've got your flam kick, flam kick, which we played previously in the song, okay? Right flam kick, left flam kick, okay? And the three and four and. So we'll try that whole line. So we've got three, four.
Okay, so you want to get that line, make sure it flows. Okay, you can see you've got a double bar line at the end of that line. So you've got musical change and above the bar, that uh, final bar of that line, bar 26, says DS Alcoda, which is short for Del Senor Alcoda, which means go back to the sign, which we took a mental note of earlier in the piece, which is the start of bar five. Okay, so we play through from the sign at bar five, and you see beneath where it says DS Alcoda above bar 26, it also says with repeats. Okay, so when we go back to the, uh, to the sign at the start of bar five, we play through bar five, six, seven. We play uh, the uh, first time bar there, go back to the start repeat sign at bar five, play through five, six, and seven, play the second time bar, play through again, bars five, six, and seven, play the third time bar. Okay, so that's what it means when it says with repeats. So you've got those three endings. Now after you play the three endings, you go to the next line, starts at bar 11, you play bar 11, bar 12, bar 13, and at the end of bar 13, it says to coda there with the coda sign. So after you play bar 13, you go to the coda at the end of the piece. Okay, so if you look at the coda now, it's like at bar 27 at the end of the piece. Remember coda means tail, which is the, uh, the tail of the piece, the end of the piece. So bar 27, we've got slash notation, which means we can improvise, and above the bar it says fill. So we want to improvise a one bar fill in bar 27. Then we've got bar groove in bar 28. Okay, eight notes on the hi-hat, just like we had in um, the first line and section A. Okay, so you've got one and two and three and four and bass playing the one, snare playing the two, ghost note on the half two, two eighth notes on the bass drum on the three, so three and. And we've got rest on four, snare drum on the end of four. Okay, you've got open eye out on the end of one, close on the two, accent on the end of four. So that bar is three, four. Okay, with the next bar, bar 29, another improvised one bar fill, and then we finish going round the kit like we did at the start of section C. So one and two and, you can play that paradiddle, right paradiddle, or just single strokes. Then we've got that flam 16 triplets around the kit, which we played at the end of section B. Okay, so flam, and then the end of three, that upbeat, played as three 16th note triplets. Then we've got kick on the four for an eighth note, hi-hat and snare drum on the end of four with an accent. Okay, so hit that, hit that note with more force, more emphasis. Okay, so that final bar sounds like it is three, four, Okay, and that brings us to the end of the piece. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try section C, okay, so bars 25, 26, 27, and 28. We're gonna go back to the sign at the start of section A, play through with all three endings, okay, ending one, two, and three, play through bars 11, 12, and 13, and then we're gonna go to the coda. Okay, so get that flowing, nice, comfortable tempo, as soon as you're comfortable, bump up the tempo as you're adding feel to the section, okay? And then once you're at 115, okay, obviously that's the goal tempo, okay? So you wanna to get to 115. So we're gonna hear how it sounds out the song tempo, 115 beats per minute. And now we'll try that in time with a backing track.
Okay, so that's all the sections. So once you can play each section individually, you wanna work on the transitions, okay, between sections. So you wanna go from the top line into section A, then you wanna try going from section A into section B, okay, so obviously there's a big contrast there, so there's a big change from section A to section B, so really work on that transition, and then you wanna to, want to work on going from section B to section C, okay? So once you got that, those transitions, you wanna put the whole piece together, so we're gonna try that now. Okay, so in the first part of the song, so the first line in section A, make sure those open hi-hats are really neat and tidy, okay, they're opening at the right point, closing at the right point, especially where, where you've got that contrast of left foot lifting, right foot going down, so make sure you've got complete control of those rhythms, make sure the Motown feel has got the right dynamics, okay, just to give it that authentic sound, and then in section B, make sure the two and four, those upbeats on the ride bell, are right in the right places, okay, so that uh, you want to make sure you're really solid with that rhythm because there's a lot of space, okay, so it's easy to kind of come in too early or too late with the ride bells, okay, so right on the two and the four, and that bass and snare drum rhythm underneath, really solid, okay, so you're not having to rely on a right-handed rhythm, so you've got that good internal rhythm. Okay, so let's try now playing the whole piece through at the song tempo, which is obviously the goal tempo, so you want to start a nice comfortable tempo when you go through the whole piece, and then build up to 115 beats per minute. Beats per minute. Okay, so let's hear how it sounds. Okay, so once everything's sounding good and it's feeling good, okay, you, you're kind of portraying the feel of the music and you feel like you're ready, we're gonna put it together in time with a backing track. Okay, so remember, two bar counting, we come in on the three of the second bar of the counting with that pickup or anacrusis, then we're in with a piece, okay? Let's capture the vibe of the song, the style of the song, make sure we're not just playing notes, okay, but really playing the music. Okay, so final thing to do, let's play it in time whole piece in time with the backing track. 